Oh, if there's anybody there. Um, happy Good Friday. <coughs> I know you're probably all out, and I won't blame you because it's lovely outside. That's why I won't get this done, and then we can go and have a nice afternoon somewhere. So, um, here we are, week 10. <coughs> uh, this is Drippy One, Drippy Acrylic Portrait. So, uh, Really not trying to get a likeness, you know, I don't know who she is and uh, she's got that look in her face which is quite, uh, kind of an arrogant look, but uh, that's what I'm trying to capture actually, but it doesn't really matter. It's all about the technique, so you can practice doing the technique and um, I'm going to do it uh, quite quick, an hour, <coughs> and then move on. Uh, we call it drippy because we just throw paint at it. So um, uh, the colours I'll be using are cadmium yellow, but sienna, uh, ultramarine blue, got some alizarine as well, and some green even. But uh, we want to create some uh, darker tones around the head, like this, just this side of the face especially. So the light's coming from here, so it's warmer on this side, it's cooler on this side, and then you get a hair which is kind of dishevelled, you know, quite uh, erratic in places so well, we need to get the angle of the eyes and the nose and the mouth and everything in the right place so we draw it first with a bit of uh, charcoal and then we use uh, a waterproof pen which is um, I use uh, what they call called uh, Univol fine um, and it's waterproof and it's also fade proof so you can sign up with this and your signature will never fade uh, so I'm going to sketch it first, everything's running I think, yeah we're live and uh, sun is shining and here we go for another class uh, in a series of 12, uh, the last 12 by the way. Okay, so week 10 and um, we're doing portrait. So I, I don't want to cover the whole paper on this one, I am using gesso paper again because we need to rub out the colour and I've got my damp cloth which is a uh, you need to rub back to the white paper. Uh, so you're putting the colour on and you, you're rubbing back to the white of the paper like you did with the charcoal. But we're doing the same thing with uh, uh, the colours, like I said. So uh, we want to get this lovely kind of shape of the head. Uh, because of the angle, I'm going to have a slight angle like that. I want my egg to be slightly uh, curved, can you see? A bit slightly tilting, if you know what I mean. Like that, so I do lots of little lines, one of them right. <coughs> you have got a slight curve on the face, which is like that, because she's uh, she's actually turning her head slightly that way. And the eye position is always at 90 degrees to this straight line, like that. So we drew uh, a straight line in the middle of the egg, which is about there, okay, which is 90 degrees to this straight line <coughs> and it's also 90 degrees to that one because it's the same angle because you're on the same more or less the same eye level so we draw a straight line you can see and then we don't need these straight lines after we get rid of them so this is just the position of eyes okay and uh, when we put the socket in the middle uh, which is where the eyeball sits and we do the same socket that way um, oh, hang on a minute. No, the head's actually have done it wrong to start with, see? Even I do it wrong. Uh, and I've been doing it for years. <laughs> so we need to kind of move the head up, so um, move the head up and get a clean rub of it uh, from this position. So we get rid of that because it's a curve. Okay, so we've got the straight line, if it was straight, at 90 degrees there. But because she's leaning back, this becomes a curve like that. It does position the eyes more or less in the same place as a straight line, but you're just going to see more of the face, less of the forehead. Uh, that's what I should have done, you see, first. Uh, and then we put the socket in where the cross, so that's higher up now, you can you see? So that eye and that eye should be on the same level. You could draw a straight line in between them, can you see? But all that's doing is giving you the perspective of a nose and the nose uh, of the face. And the nose is usually kind of halfway. So again, that's just, and then the mouth's usually 
halfway between that but not always so because she's looking at me she's still slightly turning her head uh, the pupil is not in the middle it's just to one side and we draw the iris like that and then we've got a slight uh, half moon shape on that side of her eye and then a curve on this side like that so that positions that eye she should look at you because she's slightly turning her head but then she's slightly looking to the left so this eye again straight line and then a curve like that so you're seeing the half moon shape there don't put the bottom eyelid in you know where it is we can draw a line under it later and then we get the shape of the inside of the nose so that's kind of the straight of the nose <clears throat> once we get that we can look roughly for where the tip of the nose is positioned and it's about halfway I mean, believe it or not between there and there so it's about halfway between the eyes and the, the uh, position of her so it's about here okay so that is the wedge shape on her nose okay uh, and that, that gives you this angle like just something like that and that's where the nose sits on the face because you're seeing underneath the nose so you're seeing the nostrils here in that position and that gives you the septum in the middle which gives you that shape can you see like that then you get to that the filter and the, because the head's tilting back the mouth moves up slightly and that's where you get in the middle of the top lip and they get these lovely kind of curves we drop a line down from the tear duct to give you the width of the nostrils like something like that both sides and then we drop a line down from the pupil uh, like something like that to give you the uh, the, light, the width of a mouth which is something about like that okay <laughs> and then we've got this lovely curve like that and the corners of a mouth same here same here uh, curve of a mouth going up and then the bottom lips quite full you've got this uh, you can just see a teeth but it's up to you if you want to put them in and then the bottom lips just got this shape with two muscles and then oh, just underneath the lip there always keep it in a straight kind of line then so everything becomes a straight line then we look at the distance from uh, the distance from the bottom lip there to the chin which is about here and the light on the chin is about there and then we get a shadow here can you see and that gives you the rough position of the chin. If we draw um, the hair now, which is coming down, uh, the shape of it actually, where the fringe hits this eyebrow, because the eyebrows sit there, um, and then it's coming off the, off her head here, like that, like that. So like that. But that also gives you the shape of the angle of the jaw, which is curving slightly like that and then we've got a bit of a line there the bottom the top eyelid always overlaps the bottom one so that's why you get that dirt shape in the uh, in the eye there uh, um, we're not smudging this so just be careful uh, we're just going to draw it uh, because the head's back we've got that line there and then the bottom eyelid and then here we've got the curve of the hair again coming from about the the fringe sorry and the rest of her hair is just a big shape, okay? She's got this big shape on top of her head like that. And then inside here, comes down, comes off the picture. Again, this gives us our, our angle for the jaw. So from here, we've got an angle there. And then we've got the jawline, which is going up to our ears. If you look at the bottom of her ears, they're on level with the mouth. So we've got the shape here. Like that. Then we've got the angle of the jaw and that's where we get this uh, shadow inside that ear you can see like that and that gives you the shape of her ear and it also gives you the shape of her neck you can see just like that something like that and just keep the neck nice and slim <coughs> uh, keep the eyes a little bit smaller if they think they're too big because <coughs> she's looking down so they're slightly close and we've got this nice shape between the hair so we're just looking at that. I'm trying to get some of these uh, 
loose areas of uh, of a hair in like that. Yeah? And then when we paint, we can just let it drip and go. Uh, so this one, I've got the side of a head, like I said. It's a straight line, more or less. You get the cheekbone, then you get this line. Uh, and then you get the hair over there. So you've got, uh, you can see the ear there as well. Uh, yeah, and this one. Okay. Uh, nice smooth. And if you wanted to put the teeth in, just put a line there like that. And the bottom of the teeth. Don't, don't show a lot of tonal value. Alright, so we keep this lovely kind of shape, which should be, uh, the nose should be slightly over to the left hand side. Only slightly. So that gives you the inside of the nose. This gives you this inside of the nose and the tear duct. Can you see? It's like that. So once you've sketched it, and you're happy with the position of uh, the head and where she's looking. Uh, looking down, you could put the shoulders in if you wanted. That gives you this because this overlaps. And then you get the shoulders and then you get a, so you got a, a kind of white t-shirt on. Uh, if you wanted to put that in, it's fine. Uh, lovely. So we'll keep that as it is. Get your pen. Now you, try, you can draw over the pen, so don't worry about it. Now is your chance to kind of reposition things if they're slightly out. So I'm looking at the eyes, uh, the iris. I'm not making them as big. And uh, the top eyelid, just something like that. Very thin. Yeah, and the way the top eyelid overhangs. And that shadow. You need to draw shadows. We look inside the eye and we also look at the thickness of that eyebrow. You see? So I draw the whole thickness and then I do the hair like that. again the way it falls around the face and the eyes and then we do the cheek and the way it comes in here uh, curves a little bit angular keep it angular the angle of the jaw and then that ear as it comes around here put that in and the neck okay so with this eye Pupil in the middle, iris, top eyelid, and then you've got this uh, tear duct you can just about see, like a comma shape, uh, around the iris, like top eyelid, overlaps the bottom eyelid, things like that. Then we put a line just under the nose and we move the nostril over slightly because it's uh, it needs to be kind of dark there. And then we can draw a line roughly at the side of the nose not too much um, and then inside where the filter is going to be and we've got this lovely shape of the top lip as it comes around again to the corners of the mouth and the middle muscle we can draw the the thickness of the teeth as well the shape of the teeth and um, the bottom lip like that and the shape don't put a line all the way around it because it kind of makes it kind of harsh uh, and we just draw the light, uh, the angle of the jaw, and the hair. So the hair, got the shape coming off like that. Uh, as long as we get that shape right, it should be very similar to the picture. And that's all we're using the picture for. Here's a reference. Okay, uh, so here it comes off, uh, it comes this way, uh, it comes down here. Uh, just behind that uh, that ear, which is just peeping out. Oh yeah, I don't think I've missed anything. Okay, you can sign it now if you wanted to. Or if you don't like it at the end, you can just rub it out. <laughs> and I've got a small jar all over my paper. Put that away. Get my uh, tissue. I think I've got all the hair in. Yeah, well, I've got missed, missed a little bit here. Because this is coming around. So where the fringe hits the side of the forehead and the hair and whatever. So you got a wild look in her eyes. Right. Not wild, but um, how good. Um, use some tissue. Use tissue first, you get rid, rid of most of the charcoal. And you're just left with this lovely 
kind of uh, sketch, if you like. Sketch, but you've used, you know, a few rules of positioning to get the sketch in the right place. Um, she's looking at me, but uh, slightly just on the iris to be a little bit further over. Because you can see with both eyes, can you see? Uh, you've got this shape, uh, the bottom eyelid, and the shape there where the bottom eyelid is. Uh, um, yeah, and this curve, and there's something else I saw then. Uh, the side of it, I, well, the eyebrow, that was it, so I, because I've missed this one out, so just put that in. And then we've got the shape of a neck and a ears and what have you. And that's it. I could put an earring in there if you wanted to. And uh, I've got one here, haven't I? Got one here in here. And then uh, we'll do the light. Because this, this is the tone of my man. The face might be a little bit longer than it actually is. Well, that just means the head's coming forward a bit. Um, what are we doing? Look it up. Nice angle, keep that jaw. Uh, we can rub out the pen, so don't worry if you draw it wrong. You know, you can rub through the pen as well. So um, keep that angle nice and light. And now we use the rubber. Now we don't use the rubber um, to rub out anything on the pencil or the charcoal. So make sure it's clean because we don't want to spread. Uh, anything around that charcoal dust. Uh, we want to get rid of the charcoal here to keep the paper clean because it's all about colour this one. So we'll dry it off a bit and then we'll uh, just rub out in the nose. Uh, see um, the charcoal in the face really because I want it to be clean, clean that uh, white underneath because I'm going to go back to that. Okay. <coughs> Hands. Well, I think I have missed out actually. I can just see the eyelid, which is like that, on both eyes. So it's um, coming up from here, it goes a bit wider here in the middle, then it goes away like that. Both eyes, iris, iris. Uh, I can colour that in because it's actually a dark hole in the eyes. Uh, if you put that in, she'll look at it anyway, won't she? Um, Uh, a bit off the neck as well. <coughs> okay, well, that, we want that to be nice and light in the middle because that's the nose bit. That's where the light's going to be. <coughs> so, get the colours. I haven't put any out yet. So I'm looking at cabin yellow. <coughs> yep, no beer today. Everybody's eating fish. I'm eating fish too after, no. aren't I? I've had to put my dinner away to, to, in case somebody were watching me. But nobody's here, so Some, I'm sure somebody will watch later. <laughs> Working on a bank holiday. Good Friday, I don't know. Hello, Bert Sienna, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Crimson. I'm going to use some of this paint to paint the darker ships as well, so uh, you need some thick pigment. <laughs> and I'm going to splatter it, so I think I better put my penny on. That's a bit all over my shirt. <laughs> like that. So it's that thing you have to carry. <laughs> Amazing how you see pe other people in your pictures. <laughs> Nothing like the girl I'm doing, but somebody else I've carry. Uh, Ultramarine blue, uh, but these are going to be quite thick, and um, phyllo green, which is that lovely transparent green that uh, gives me darks, uh, dark tones. Phyllo green and uh, alizarine crimson make beautiful darks, not light, not black, because black is not a colour. <coughs> All right. So because I'm going, I might have to tilt the board as well to, and hair dry 
to blow the paint, so that's what I want to do uh, around the features. Um, <coughs> and then, oh, and then when I put the colour on, uh, let it dry, and then I'm going to start rubbing out the lighter tones. Okay, so in the in the scheme of colour, if you change yellow into white, white uh, into grisel tones, that's what I'm trying to say. It, uh, yellow is the lightest tone next to white and then the next one will be sienna then the green, then the blue and green so we actually work that way you see and because the light's coming from this side I want this side of the head to be quite warm and then this side of the head to be quite cool now it doesn't matter if it's not straight off because we can uh, not even put any water in my jar so organised we are today too many things, put a light up it, yellowish. Which seemed to take two hours instead of one and oh, half an hour. Anyway, as it, as it uh, is always the case. So I'm going to drop some uh, another yellow in, then sienna. So we've got quite a bit of water. Keep the colours clean. Okay. <coughs> Keep the colours clean. Um, stop saying that. And then I want thicker colour there. So we're going sienna. I'm going yellow. Like this. Beautiful. And sienna. Again, because it's nice and warm over this side. And we can let this uh, change into the shape of cool colour over this side, so we've got uh, alizarine, okay, go over the eyes, she isn't going anywhere, is she, no, so here we've got blue, again, and we can splatter with blue to get lovely shadows, and her hair there, like that, don't let go on the ceiling, or the, <laughs> anywhere, uh, turn the paper round as well, let it go that way, get rid of some of the white if you have to, I'm going to use a bit of green for stronger darks on this side of her hair. Okay, like that. Oh, it's mad. It's mad, man. And then on this side as well, and then underneath the neck, because the chain is usually quite, um, quite cool actually. So we want some sienna there. Let it run, let it blend. Uh, take out some of these lovely runs. We don't want a lot of the runs, which are going all over the face, but uh, I've gone mad today. <laughs> so I can take them out like this, you can see. So I just blend them away from the face. So the green, it's got a green face now. It's, it doesn't matter, as long as the tones are right. We've got the face, and we've got the features, and we've got the hair, and we've got. So she's under there, can you see? She's peeping out from under that uh, image, and I want to keep those lovely lights and those blues, and we can dry a bit of it off, and I can have splatters, a few more splatters, and let it run a bit. So I've got the lovely darks in there. Uh, this is a dry brush, by the way. Get, keep a dry brush handy, and you can just splatter and blend to your heart's content. Okay. Um, I do like, I've got a bit of kind of blue, but I get a smaller brush as well, so we get some ultramarine, uh, mix that with a bit of red. And on this side we've got some purples, because the purple and yellow are complementary. Uh, um, just need to close this, don't want to splash everywhere. <laughs> And uh, we can turn it the other way, like that. And again, I can use the green and the blue mixed together to give me. I uh, need some water with this, so I want to get the shape of her hair like here, like that. And splatters, all right, and shapes and. Trying to get rid of any any darker, cooler tones that are actually in the features. Um, I was trying to keep this side of her face 
warm, but it's actually turning cool, so it um, doesn't matter. Put a bit of sienna over that. See that? As long as your paper's dry, you're okay. It's when it's um, your gesso, I mean, not, uh, not your paper. As long as it's dry, you're okay. Um, you put that there. <laughs> Turn it round. It's very kind of wet. Okay, I might just... Side as well, right next to um, my there because this bit is quite dirty, and I can scumble it in as well. So I've got this lovely kind of shape. And see, we're off with the tangent. It's not perfect. It's gone different colour. Well, I've got the shape there, and that's all. That's all that matters. Shape of her hair. I'm just going over the face. That's never do. And then let that dry a bit. Okay, man, man, man. So when I start to uh, remove the light bits, she should appear as if by magic. Okay. I had one person, but they disappeared. So. <laughs> Must be doing well today. Uh, keep these nice lights. <sighs> Glow things. Uh, if you want any more runs, it's like different colours, just plonk it in and then let it blend, you can see, let it run that way, let it run this way. Any amount you put in at this stage is going to be there afterwards, especially around the head. Look it up. So I'm just adding a bit more kind of blue over this side because I like this blue. Ultramarine blue is quite nice. Yeah. Keep that lovely light and dark and whatever. And then we'll dry it. Uh, I'm always amazed I don't get it anywhere else. Uh, I have got a bit on me. Yeah. That's it. Doesn't matter, it adds to the texture on the beach. And I also got some seagulls, so that doesn't matter. A few spots. <laughs> if you get any spots on your. Uh, and your paintings, just turn them into seals. Yeah. Lots of charcoal on the floor. Yeah. All right. Beautiful colours in this. This is why I try to keep these colours. I lost a lot of the light, but I can always rub this side. And you can always use your paint paint, see, so I don't worry about anything that's, uh, yeah, shouldn't be that tone of value or that colour, because you can always rub out and glaze it. Okay, you know, she's still there. That's the main thing. She's actually this ghostly image. I've got a face a bit long. It's mainly the nose because it should be kind of here, shouldn't it? Yeah. My fault. Anyway, not to worry. It just means the head's coming forward a bit. I just need a drink. Um, cloth. Now we start to use uh, a damp cloth. Now if I look at a hair on the forehead. I get these shapes, you see, which is actually wet paint. It's still there. Uh, and it's a bit too light, that, so I can glaze that later, make it a little bit darker. 
So I'm going around the eyebrow, inside this eye, the top eyelid, again the same principles. Uh, this one's lighter on this side, and we can glaze that. The half moon bit in her eye, quite light, like that. Uh, right in the corner, quite light, and then the bottom eyelid that and then in that, uh, that shape just below the, below the eye look it up and then we get this curve coming from there which uh, this is the dirt bit so I've gone way too low down with the nose uh, but it doesn't matter because it means the head's more forward so there's always you know happy accidents and creating different things as long as it looks okay it doesn't matter but if it starts to look uh, kind of weird is that, that, how many painters are actually out there that are not like the person you draw or paint or the person who draws and paints it and then you realize you know when you realize that it's because they've done something wrong uh, but it actually adds to the form of the image you know so it wouldn't be the same if you can see what I'm trying to get at. No, probably not. I don't know. I'm going to glaze the fire because it's a little bit dark. I want to keep some of the hair so I go round it. Like this. So I've got a strand of hair there. And you can see my, um, my light tones on the my, um, pen mark underneath where I've, I've done the shape of the uh, hair. And I've also got uh, a mark where. I've got that top eyelid. So what I will do while I'm here and I've got my brush is get some ultramarine and alizarine again. Uh, quite a thick paint. And I'm just going to brush in the eyelid and I'll brush this one in as well. You know, you don't have to keep it all the same because it could go over this way and then I could go into a hair on that side of her face, is it? So we've got the top eyelids quite... Uh, Okay, well, we can draw that later. Just want to do the lights first and make it start to appear from the painting. And then um, bring in this uh, bottom eyelid again, the light catching it there, and a bit of the half moon shape on the right of it because uh, she's looking at me. And the top eyelid in the middle there. And then it goes a little bit lighter here around the edge. Like the other one does, it's just opposite to the other one. A little bit of light there, a little bit of light there. Tear duct. You always get some little highlight in the tear duct. Uh, she's actually not looking at me now. It's amazing. You just move one eye and she'll, she'll change position. So this is the light bit and the nose. It's quite light in the middle there. Like that. You can see more on this side. And you can see it on the other side. So we've got this lovely shape inside the eye. This comes down to the cheek and the cheekbone. So that's the hair. That's the hair that's creating that light and nice shape. And the eye, and that's a little bit darker there. So I want to kind of glaze it slightly, and then it goes lighter here. And then this blends into the same tone I've got at the side of the cheek. To something like that. Uh, this is right, right, slightly um, darker. Uh, corners of a mouth, and then the filtering bit. You see the light there, like that. and then this side of a, a, a nose is quite light. So the light's coming from that side. Actually, so we do the light on a nostril. Um, curve of it and this is lighter still this is as light I should say you can hardly see any difference there the corner values are very very similar I can see and then just below this eye we get the cheekbone which is it in the light got a shadow there and then I've got another light on the side of her face just about here and this I can paint that later and make it darker going round that here that. Reflected lights, which is the side of this side of a face, 
There's a shadow there actually, but nice and dark. Then I've got the ear and the bottom of the ear lobe. It's coming out slightly. Uh -huh. And then over here we're going later. Cheek, it's a little bit lighter there. Cheek, and the shape of the jaw there, and the light it's in the top lip, and then in the middle of the mouth there. And we've got some light hitting top lip, it goes a little bit lighter in the head's back. And then we've got some light. Just at the bottom of the bottom lip, especially on the right hand side, like that. Teeth wise, you can hardly see them. Just little bits. Uh, and then we're going to do the curve of a, chio, uh, a jaw there, which is quite uh, quite light on that side. You bring it around a bit. Uh, bring it all the way around like that. I we can draw it after. And then we um, look at the mouth, there's a little bit there under the bottom lip, and then we get a highlight there which I've actually drawn. So it's, it's nice and light on the chin, and then you get two kind of marks. You get the dip on the chin, and then the under, the light underneath, reflecting. Uh, just above the top, part, top lip, we've got some light there, and there. Uh, the corner of the mouth, uh, gap, and the side of the nose, a little bit lighter. Side of the mouth, tiny little jaw. Where's that a bit? Um, that here, the earring, make it bigger. A hair, a hair up there, oh, they're a bit curly. Uh, um, I'll get rid of this Elizabethan bit, I'm going to put blue there. Um, this lovely light here, on top of the nose, tip of the nose. And uh, the one in the middle. Okay, this is the darker bit. There. Uh, this is quite light as well. Not the darker bit, I mean. This is light bit against the darker bit. It doesn't change much actually. Uh, contrast. Uh, it goes up to the eye and then I get this bit. Yeah, and you can see a little kind of shapes in the hair. Um, I do like the way I've got these lovely textures in the hair. Yeah. So when you take the paint off, as it's wet, because it's still wet in places, that's giving me these, um, these textures. So this is coming out from the picture, um, and then what I need to kind of Put um, darker tones in it and got my small brush out to it anyway. Pointy one. Need a pointy brush, so I'll get some blue, a bit of others green, green, need to. Look at her eyes, nice and dark, so I want the pupil and the iris all around that top eyelid, like that, so the iris. And then the shadow on the eye, and then we look at the nostril, that's quite dark tone there. Okay, and the same on this side, quite a dark tone, nice and big on this one. Like that. Uh, same here, you got that pupil. 
I'm just going to add in the darks, it makes more kind of sense. So the eyebrow is quite dark in the middle as it sails away there behind the back of the head. When we do the mouth and the lips, we got dark in the corners, like that. Uh, both sides, especially on the top lip, like that. And we got a little bit of a curl up, like that. And then we paint the, um, the negative space just at the side of her teeth, and a bit underneath, a bit in the middle. Something like that, and then you get the shape of the mouth, see. And the bottom lip. <coughs> so you've got a slight, slightly open the mouth. Uh, nostril, again, here we're going uh, iris, uh, top eyelid, lovely and dark. Uh, keep them. Keep them um, that's the word, balanced. They need to be very similar uh, as you look across into that eye, uh, top eyelid, bottom eyelid, things like that. While you're using this, it's a good idea to put some stronger tones in. So I'm using blue, little green again, and then if I look at the side of her face has so got a lovely flick of hair I mean, eh? and the same at the top I can also take out the light kind of around her cheek something like this and redraw anything that's it's just slightly out of shape uh, this is the background tone of the it's the back of her head actually but it's a slightly darker tone, so we can use that as a, a negative space to bring out the the light on the neck. So we're going to do that. I haven't done it actually. Uh, same on this side because it's a bit darker. But uh, stand back and look at it. All right. Um, we can glaze the top lip a bit, make it darker. So I've got a bit of alizarine. Now when you look at it, it's slightly darker there. Yeah. Uh, we've got these shapes and then it's darker underneath and in the corners. So again, we've got this shape, slightly darker. There's a line in the middle, like that. And then as you come around here, it goes slightly darker down to the corner of the mouth. Okay. Uh, I've got the same kind of principle on the bottom lip. We've got some alizarine. We've got a lovely dirt there on that lip and it goes under the lip as well. And then from this side we've got the same thing on the opposite, if you know what I mean. Slightly darker in the corners and that's what I want to achieve. And then we've got the shadowy bits. So we've got a, a lovely kind of shadow here which I've, I've not, I've, I didn't put in but I, I, I intended to uh, paint it in like I'm doing now. So I've got that lovely dark on this side of a, a face. And that shadow that blends into the rest of the face there. Um, and inside the eye, again, I'm using a little bit thicker pigment, less of a glaze. Uh, so the side of this eyelid is dark, okay, and then inside this eye is quite dark, and it goes up there as well. Blend it with your finger, soften the edges, you see, got a lovely shape, just at the top of the eyelid, here, yeah, on this side. We can use alizarine and blue some cool colours in there, you know, uh, that's where the shadow is, and that's where it blends into a hair. And then it goes a little bit darker over this side as well. Because you've got the light there, you can just glaze through it, see? And then here we've got this shape of her falling down. You've got 
got the same thing happening on this side of her face because from here I've got lovely shadows that's it so I can glaze and I can glaze from the mouth uh, which goes across here to the face get your little brush out your big dry brush of it again and just blend it like that. okay go away about our edges because we can soften these Soften these out edges, um, and then you get in the jawline like that. And here we've got uh, that lovely sh shadow on a cheek, and a bit under a, a bottom lip, like there. And this shadow here at the corner of a mouth, and so, and then that blends into one. All that is is a lizard and ultimately mixed together just to give it the shadows hook it up can't see any shadow on this side all i can see is the shadow underneath so i can get my, my other brush i do a similar thing because it's nice and dark here uh, 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 this is a dark shape as well and then it goes down the corner down the side of the neck where the purple is I'm going to start to manipulate the paint around the face. So I want some green again and some red mixed together. So where I've got this lovely shape, because that's that hair coming down, and it's coming down the corner of the face like that. It's also casting a shadow. So we cast the shadow and then it comes off. Like that. Create a texture. Uh, here we've got this lovely dark as well. This is the side of a face. Uh, this one. And see, so, uh, we've got the angle. Down that a little bit. Angle and then shape. Her shadows. Um, what time is it? That nostril bigger. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, colours of a mouth again, green and red, nice and dark. Uh, we can use that. Anything dark, even charcoal, if you want. Compressed charcoal to uh, to put in any shapes. So I've got this lovely hair. If you're doing hair, always start with the the base of it and then go upwards. It looks more realistic when it hits the face, you see? Uh, so you get these lovely shapes around around the face. Uh, and uh, it um, frames the face, doesn't it? You get this lovely curve, then you go into the neck and come down again. So we can pick out the neck. Okay, <coughs> keep this brush clean, dry, let it dry a bit, get your damp cloth now, uh, keep looking, the neck is lightening, on this side, um, a face needs lightening actually on this side as well, nice and light, you can't see any change in tone actually, um, we've got a lovely light in her eye, which we can put in with white paint. I'm going to take out the colour at the bottom. Again, we'll give her blue eyes, I think. I always wanted blue eyes, I never had them. It's a shame, my kids have blue eyes. Well, my kids have got blue eyes. Take after Lynn. Lynn's got blue eyes. Lynn's gone out shopping. And there's more money. Um, yeah, looking around the eyes now, we've got some quite nice shapes. Um, I want to keep the filter light, if possible. Just that shape. And the way it goes up into the nose there, you get to start to see all these different taller layers. As you get 
to the more kind of you've taken quite a lot of light off then you start to see where things change slightly differently see it's like uh, the septum it's quite light as well because it's kind of a reflected light right. I picked up some of the green all around the mouth and then this comes down to the corner of the mouth you see so that side of it face that makes the the lips look a bit darker and then at the side of the mouth here and the bottom lip got a beautiful kind of highlight just hitting the lip corners of the mouth coming down like that. <laughs> and then going this way yeah and then the light on the chain that's that lovely angle of light we can soften this shadowy bit as well and you've got a lovely line of light there which is the reflection from the t-shirt because she's wearing a, t a white t-shirt um, and then you've got the Adam's apple bit which protrudes slightly so that's quite light and then this side of the face you've got the angle of the artery and the neck you see and then this is the this is the actual t-shirt shape around the shoulder. So I can take that out a bit. <laughs> can do the same over there, you see. I think she needs more hair. You know, so standing back, I haven't done her eyes. Standing back a bit, she's looking in that direction. Um, I do like some of these shapes. I'm quite happy with that. I need some dark tone. I need some bigger darks. You know what I mean. So I want this lovely. Well, I want a dark shape, not a. And it needs to be um, colourful as well. So I need to add these areas of tone like that in a hair you see just to bring up the hair because I don't think it was uh, dark enough actually and this side as well so um, random marks random kind of uh, shape again you see like that uh, kind of balancing the head up as well. Uh, I'm getting rid of some of that light. But then I've got uh, a blob of tone there, which is actually... And the ear is quite dark as well, so I've got a nice shadow in there, you can see. And then around that ear, I've got lights. And we can blow the hair. Um, we can blow the hair over this side as well. So she's got a wild... Her day. That's her. She's had a wild hair day. Mad hair day, that's the one. Um, and they're looking where they the kind of dark shapes are. Being very careful that I don't get rid of uh, some of these under areas. But bring out the ear, actually. And paint around the earring. It's really in blue. I can't see it. I didn't get it out. I'm going to give her blue eyes. Um, and we need some white as well. So I get the top, <laughs> pick up the top, pick it up, <laughs> pick up the blue. Um, I've got it done enough, not done enough, because this side you can't see the white. So we go through the white to the gesso so at the bottom of her eye, on both eyes. So cerulean blue is the only colour I haven't kept out. 
actually used. So I can um, use it now. I'll put some in and then you take it off. So I get your cloth, put it in, take it off, and you're just clear, left with a, a kind of transparency of blue. Still get that lovely light. And then when we put uh, the highlight in, um, using a small brush, <coughs> I'm going to use some white paint. I'm going to use white paint, I think, instead of pastel. I'm always using pastel. So I'll use some white paint. I'll take the top off because it's stuck. It reminds me of something like uh, one of these old day. Uh, I don't know, I keep thinking of Bewitched and things like that. The highlight in our eyes, on both eyes, is in the same place. Her kid up. <coughs> She's looking at me. Great stuff. She's got some lovely kind of lights in the features. Be very, very careful. When you start using the white in the features, it's like the bit of an eyeball that catches the light is in the middle. The and uh, okay, because that's where the light comes from. We've got a nice, you can mix a bit of uh, color with it. <coughs> nearly, nearly kind of a lizardine because uh, once you get that <coughs> reflected light, it's kind of underneath here, for instance. It is a reflective light, but it's in shadow, so you get that cool, cool shape. It's like this one as well. So although I've taken the light off, I can have a bit more to it, you can see. Um, a little bit more light, white, and um, the bottom eyelid. Again, a very, very uh, small amount, tear duct, tear duct and inside the eye because that's where you get these really nice highlights right inside the eye and we've got the tip of the nose which is the highlight okay inside the nostril so because I'm using a bit of a lizard and white I'm going to add oh, I've got an itchy nose what does an itchy nose mean? Bit of white to me, it's not light enough. A bit more white. Just to put in the reflected light around the nostril and then blend it into the rest of the nostril. You can see? Just gives that lovely shape. It's the same on this one. And it gives that lovely kind of highlight just around the nostril. And we've done the bit with the with the paint, with the Removing the textures, uh, the tones, too light. But now we need to just emphasize little bits of it. Okay, you can redraw things. Uh, the middle of a lip, filter, the corners of the mouth. Yeah, just a little thing then, the side of the mouth. Look, um, the, the ear, earrings. I'm going to put that in. This one I can't see, but I can see where I scratched it out. So I'll put that in. Um, you've also got a light at the back. A bit of one. Hooky dook. We can use this for, and give you a pink shirt. A white shirt. Um, we can use it also for highlights. So we look at her hair. Uh, we look at her hair. Where the light's catching it. Uh, we can have the colour here. Again, yellow, yellow and white. 
We've got some lovely lights at the top. And when we put the lights in, don't cover all your marks up because we need them. You need them to be part of that haphazard painting. You're, you're actually using the mistakes as part of your picture. Okay. So again, don't get rid of everything. And you're halfway there, or you're nearly there, you can either leave it, you can uh, stop before you overdo it, which is a good thing to do actually. Um, I'm always saying that. I try and do, that's why we do <coughs> a kind of quick one hour studies, uh, because it kind of stops you being fussy. Okay. And then you can uh, stand back, look at it, and remove what you don't like, and whatever. I'll leave it as it is. And um, yeah, it's a different person, she's some relation, it could be her elder sister actually, but we don't know. Uh, <laughs> It's just one o'clock. But any highlights, anything that you want, very, very small marks. Now, you can do with the, the white pigment, uh, the yellow and white, and, and uh, yeah, we can put things in that are details, that's all. Uh, we don't have to do all rubbing out, that's what I'm trying to uh, we can pair the background as well, because the background is an important shade. So if you want to paint the background, rather than it being just a white background, I can paint uh, this kind of cool tone around it, uh, around the side of a neck, and then let it disappear. Just little things, changing your tone. Have the same thing over here, because it's the background, so, you know, it's shapes there. <coughs> or we can just have grey. You know, grey is quite nice actually because it gives you um, a flat tone and it also brings out the colour. So if you use grey for instance like that. Mix your grey, you know, you can mix grey, easy. Three primers, uh, mix the grey, put it in, knock it back. Same over here. I don't want to go over the name though, quite happy with that. Um, again, the eyes, I did put some white in here, but it's some, so I'm just going to bring it out again. And the eyes, uh, the, always in the middle, because it's a ball. Look it up. And the nose, that's sunk. So I want some more white. Tape of the nose. That shadows and eyes. Uh, just inside the nostril there. And filter them. But don't start using the white too much. Or you'll, uh, you'll lose it. You'll lose your transparency. And we don't want to do that, do we? No. A um, bit of white, mainly on this side of the mouth, uh, bottom lip. So the light's catching up. It's a little light here inside that eye. <laughs> I could do a bit more though, actually, because I've got a shape where the hair's coming down, but I can still see the forehead behind it. See? So I, I could actually lift out more. So see, I've only got a few strands of hair rather than lots. Uh, same up here. Uh, but I do like these marks so because of the wet paint, so I want to leave that. And then we can either bring a more light near that shadow. That works quite well because it brings that cheek forward. No? Not like that. And we can use um, some dark tones to draw with. So we want to use green and red, and green and blue. Um, we can just draw shapes. So. is the shape of a, a 
and blows, for instance. Uh, yeah. right. Of the picture. <laughs> so there you go. I enjoy doing these. You're not held back by convention. You're allowed to make mistakes and rectify them. So keep the nostril nice and light on that side. I kind of like it. Okay, out. Overlook it. Side of the mouth. That bit, that bit. And that bit. They all seem to kind of seem to be the same kind of tone, slightly different. That's it, all done, five past. <coughs> Again, I've got things like uh, black pens, which are really good for putting uh, contrast in, especially the eyes for detail. You know? Or you can use, like I said, charcoal, like reform things, you know, where you get to. Something to go wrong, reshape things, corners of the mouth, teeth. Uh -huh. Don't make them look boogies boony. Corners of the mouth. And stop. I'm quite happy now. I've brought it back a bit. I was losing it earlier on. Quite a bit. Alright, there you go. Thanks for watching. Take my tape off. If it's a little bit longer than it actually is on the picture. Because the uh, position of a nose should have been a, a little bit higher up. See? You learn by your mistake. So you have to keep making mistakes as well. And that's it. Done for the week. And <coughs> till next week. I need some proper clips again. Then. Clips are full of gesso. Need some new ones. Have to get some. And there we go. Turn it to the window. It's a bit cocky. It's got a nice angle on the face. Um, zoom back a bit. I haven't got zoom. Especially like the other telly, you know. You can turn a wheel and it comes backwards. We've got one on here. Anyway, there we go. Thank you for watching. And um, have a go. It's good fun. And I'll, the class, I'll see you next week for the last two sessions. Okay, bye for now. Have a good Easter. See you soon.